This is MSI's MAG323 UPF, a 4K 160Hz rapid IPS gaming monitor, and I'll say up front that all in all, it's pretty good. There are a few things that you should know before dropping what is still a pretty hefty chunk of change on this thing, despite it being one of the cheaper high refresh rate 4K gaming monitors on the market, so let's get into it. Starting off with the sort of claimed figures, they list a 1 millisecond grey to grey response time, up to 600 nits of peak brightness, 95% coverage of the DCI-P3 spectrum, and a 1000 to 1 contrast ratio. On the face of it, that's a pretty decent spec, but as you should uh, well know by now, not all of those claims are accurate. And luckily, I've built my own test equipment to help me fact check that sort of stuff, so let's get to using it. Seeing as this is a gaming monitor, I'll start with the gaming related measurements, specifically the response times and input lag. The on-display latency is spot on. My open source response time tool measured it a hair over three milliseconds on average, which is almost exactly half the refresh rates, and virtually none of the results took over one frame to display, so that's fantastic. The response times though, that's a little more disappointing. Remember that MSI claims that this is a one millisecond gray to gray monitor? Well, even being as charitable as possible, using the faster top-end overdrive mode, which gives you horrendous overshoots, and only looking at the initial response time, as in ignoring all of that overshoot time, it's still only running at 5 milliseconds on average. Hell, even if you cherry-picked the best result from that, you know, absolute lowest mix, you'd still only get 2.1 milliseconds. If you're less charitable, which is to say more fair and balanced, you'd end up with more like 8 milliseconds on average, with the middle fast overdrive mode instead, which is the one I would recommend you use if you buy this monitor, and generally speaking, probably what you should use for most monitors anyway, the, the middle one. Now, for a 160 hertz display, that isn't the absolute worst. You'll only end up with one or two ghosted frames on screen at any one time, and the image ends up being sharp enough for a decent experience. But it's nowhere near being a one millisecond monitor. I do wish companies would stop lying about this. MSI is far from alone here. This is an industry-wide problem. Although I'm hoping that with so many people now using my response time tools, which I still have available at osrtt.com if you're interested, we can push for more accurate reporting here. Anyway, those results add up to a pretty decent gaming experience. If you have enough horsepower to drive this beast, you're going to have a great time with it. It's smooth and responsive and definitely crisp. The 32 inch form factor definitely suits the higher resolution and for me strikes the best balance of you know immersion in your game or whatever you're doing with it and practicality as it can still actually fit on a desk and be used from relatively close up. Anything larger like a 42 inch TV generally needs to be further away to be used comfortably. One advantage I haven't mentioned, but did cover in a video MSI sponsored, is the I.O. Specifically the two HDMI 2.1 ports, which come complete with the full HDMI 2.1 spec, meaning variable refresh rates and auto low latency mode are fully supported. That means if you want to use this with a console, say a PS5 for example, you get the best gaming experience possible. Actually, gaming on a PS5 is a great experience on this, much better than using it with most TVs for sure, and especially the variable refresh rate support is a pretty big benefit, and something that you'll notice while playing that smoothness and lack of tearing. As for the other claims, namely the brightness and colour focus ones, those are a lot more accurate. The 600 nits peak brightness is the HDR brightness. They claim 440 nits is the typical peak brightness, as in the SDR limit, and that's near spot on, with my Spider X2 reporting 436 nits. Close enough. 
The color gamut coverage is actually better than claimed. I recorded 98% coverage of the DCI-P3 spectrum, uh, which is a touch higher than the 95% that MSI claims. I also got a better contrast ratio too, with the best result being 1380 to 1 at 0% brightness which is still 130 nits by the way, that's really quite high for the lowest brightness setting that you can set, or a 1090 to 1 at 100% brightness instead. Either way, still better than the 1000 to 1 they claim. The only letdown here is the colour accuracy, which the Spider X2 reported as a pretty naff 3.95 Delta E average. Luckily, a color calibrator like the Spider X or X2 can calibrate out that error with uh, pretty much ease. And if you care about color accuracy, you want to have a calibrator on hand anyway, so it isn't too big of a problem. As for the rest of the monitor, the on-screen menu is pretty easy to navigate with a joystick cell switch on the back, and it has plenty of options. You got a few extras like a crosshair and a scope view, if you want them, although personally I think I'd leave them off. You can control all of those settings from MSI's Windows app too, so long as the USB host cable is plugged in. Speaking of that host cable, you've got a 3-port USB 2 hub, plus a USB-C port that can act as a second source, sending USB and display ports and receiving up to 90 watts of power from the monitor and the relatively convenient KVM function means if you plug your peripherals into the USB ports, they'll switch over when you switch display inputs. Pretty handy. Physically, the monitor is pretty standard. It has a pretty large footprint, but it's decently stable, so that's a good compromise. The stand has plenty of adjustments, namely in height, tilt, and swivel, although rotation to portrait mode is absent. Not that I would expect anyone to run this thing in portrait mode anyway. Styling wise, it's pretty plain. Uh, from the back, it's a, a pretty typical gaming monitor with a glossy section right for fingerprints and an MSI logo to the side. The front is fairly plain too, with thin bezels around the top and sides and a thick protruding chin bar with an MSI logo. But that's about it. Nothing offensive here at least. On the whole, this is a pretty decent monitor. The response times are a bit slow, and the claims are complete fabrications, but it still offers a good gaming experience, and I do really like the full HDMI 2.1 implementation. That's still a bit of a rarity in the monitor space, so it's great to see it here. The price tag, at least at the time of filming, makes it one of the cheaper 4K 160Hz gaming monitors available, with only a few 144Hz options coming in notably cheaper. If you're after a 4K high refresh rate uh, gaming monitor, especially for console gaming, this is definitely a good choice. For a PC, it's still pretty hard to beat, especially as there aren't many OLED options in the same sort of spec or price range as of yet. With that said, those are my thoughts, but I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think of the MAG323 UPF? Is it a monitor you'd pick up yourself? Is it out of your price range and you stick with something a little bit on the lower end? Or anything else? Let me know in those comments down below. I'll also leave a link to this in the description if you're interested in checking out pricing when and where you watch this, because it can and does vary. And of course, if you want to see more videos like this one, you can hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. You can also check out plenty of other videos on the end cards, and that's kind of it. Uh, if you're watching this when the video goes up, Happy New Year, hope you have a great year, and uh, yeah, also I apologise for my eyes, I'm dealing with the various disabilities that I have, and I can't really help it. Otherwise, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, we'll see you on the next video.